Hello my friends, welcome back to a new fight study. Today we got Damn it, I forgot their names. Uh no I didn't or did I? We got Hedgeman Lewis versus Jose Napolis. Pretty sure I pronounced that wrong. Uh I've watched this fight until the sixth round, so I'm gonna be excited to see the rest of it. It's a very good, very nice first six rounds. It's a fifteen rounder. Uh, or something I want to say, uh, Jose Napolis is the champ and Hedgeman Lewis is the number one contender, I believe, at this time. Uh, something I just want to point out right now before we get into the fight is uh, Hedgeman Lewis, who's in the blue. He is uh, He plays a jabbing game. Jabbing game is basically where you jab, you get the other guy to jab back, you do that a couple times, and then you counter them. So we're going to be look, uh, on the lookout for that. Uh, yeah, let's get into it. So I saw every time Lewis threw a jab, uh, his opponent, Jose Napolis, would jab back. We'll see how that plays out later in the fight. You see, every time, basically, that Lewis jabs... Watch for a jab back from the man in the red and black shorts, who is Jose Napolis. 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 I'm not sure if the S is pronounces his name. I might be pronouncing it wrong. Uh, also, Lewis is going to be... Uh, Throwing some, doing or pulling off some really good feints in this fight, so we'll also keep a lookout for that. We'll see how uh, Napolis responds to those feints. You saw another feint right there. A little small feint. Just seeing what's up. Some nice feints right there. Before that jab came out, we'll see where we play it. There's a feint. There's a feint. There's a feint. There's a feint, and then the final jab. Oh, quick punch by Lewis. There's just fainting all over the place. Awesome. I actually got a question. Someone asked me, who do you think is the best fainter? Or who fainted the most? Uh, I haven't watched too much of uh, he uh, Hedgeman Lewis, but I see that he's fainting a lot. Uh, I'm going to be excited to watch more fights of his. Uh, from what I saw, Napolis looked like the heavier puncher, but Lewis looks quite quick. Nice jabs from Lewis. See those feints again? I'm going to have to make a video on Instagram just for these feints. Now, the reason I'll, I'll go into a quick tear about why feints are so uh, believable in boxing. Why, is, why would Napolis, who's a great fighter, or any fighter, res uh, respond to a feint like this? Why would he respond like this to a feint? Now, boxing is a very high-stress situation. I always equate boxing to war, like a soldier in war. Uh, because there's so much uh, risk in in a fight, any punch can hurt you. You have to keep on uh, out. You have to keep an eye out, basically at all times, on your opponent. Uh, any movement from the opponent, you're reading this. If you're Jose Napolis, so you're keeping your attention. Any move, you have to respect it because that move could be a punch that could catch you and hurt you. So because it's such a high risk and high stress situation, 
Any move that an opponent does, even if it's Jose Napoli's fainting, Hedgeman Lewis has to respect it because that move could be a punch. And that's why feints work so good. It's not like, uh, if it's not like, I don't know what to equate it with, but it's not like if you faint, there's no risk. If your opponent faints, there's no risk that they might get you. And the risk is getting punched. So because it's such a high risk, you have to respect the feint. Because like I said, that feint, you're not sure if it's a feint. Now, a good fighter respects a feint, but they're not scared of it. Uh, most of the time, if you're fainted, you faint back. Uh, another quick thing, I know sometimes I talk a lot and pause the video, but I'm sorry about that. Another thing is, uh, if you faint too much, you start uh, being unbelievable. So the opponent starts to think, okay, this guy just keeps fainting. What I like to do when I faint a couple times, I throw a punch, even if it doesn't land and I know it's not going to land. Uh, I throw a punch. I want my opponent to know that I'm not just bluffing with my feints. I want them to know that there's something coming behind those feints. So fainting too much without punching, that makes you unbelievable. Beautiful uppercut right there by uh, Napolis. Napolis? Napolis. Let's see this interaction right here. I don't like how this video is cut. It's pretty uh, short. You kind of miss some of the action, but it's the best video I could find of this fight. Nice uppercut. Now, Jose Napolis, I've watched uh, maybe five of his fights. He throws really good uppercuts with both hands. Uh, mostly the right uppercut. He's very good at that one. He threw one right there, then came back with the hook. Nice jab from Lewis. Nice slip. Lewis is very sharp, very fast. They both look extremely uh, alike. I, I had a trouble figuring out who was who until the commentators started talking. Forgot who is who's in Hedgeman Lewis's corner, but I think he has someone that's pretty famous, like a, a ex boxer. But I forgot. I forgot who. Uh, Angelo and Angelo Dundee was the guy that uh, trained Jose Napolis, I believe. I believe. Don't quote me at, on that. Very good shape. Both both fighters are in very good shape. Jose Napolis does that little dip with his legs before he, the start of the round, which is pretty uh, counter and counter productive to saving energy. Most fighters sometimes even get picked up. Uh, their uh, their uh, trainers pick them up, help them uh, off the off the stool, so they save energy. Now this is what I meant when. Uh, I'm I'm not sure if uh, Hedgeman Lewis was setting up to play the jabbing game, or he just noticed that every time that uh, Nap uh, at that he jabbed, Napolis would come right back at him. So maybe he picked it up in this in this uh, in these early rounds, and then he started to implement this uh, game plan a little bit more. If I'm jabbing at someone and I always see them, they jab back at me, then I know I can counter them counter their jab in the future. That's why I don't like jabbing back every single time. I like jabbing back, but uh, at times, most of the time, but not every, not every time. And that's the boxing mind. You want to do stuff. You want to jab back to not get out jabbed, but you don't want to jab too much where the opponent can set you up for a counter. And that's the small details of a fight. Nice body shot by Hedgeman Lewis.
nice jabs. Nice jabs again. I'm gonna have to watch more of Hedgeman Lewis because this performance, uh, really, I really like this performance. Really, really good uh, game plan and execution. Uh, you see how Jesse Barnett too. Uh, uh, I talked about him in my previous videos. You see how he keeps Hesman Lewis keeps that right hand across the face. Now this, if you're at jabbing distance, there's no reason you should have your hand on the side of your face. If the only thing your opponent can hit you with is a jab, or if you're jabbing and you're far away, I'm keeping my right hand in front of my face. Uh, they're not gonna hit me with anything else because we're simply too far out to be and this is something that where when you understand range you understand where to put your hand and i was watching D dimitri pyrog the other day and he did the same thing when he would back out put that right hand across the face uh when would he get when he would get in close he would put it on the side of his head for the hooks because from long distance mid-range what is your opponent gonna throw what are you gonna throw the jab especially if you guys are the same height and reach when you get in closer, are they going to jab or are, are they going to throw the hook more? They're going to throw the hook more, so I'll put that right hand on the side of my head. Now, uh, some fighters jab in short distances. They throw short jabs, so that's what I like doing when someone constantly has their uh, right hand on this side of the face in close because they think the hook is coming. That's when I shoot small, tiny jabs in between their guard and catch them. But understanding range and distance, uh, you understand you understand what punches your opponent will hit you with, and that's how you could prepare your defense, basically. Nice body shots by Napolis. Napolis. Uh, I really don't know how to say his last name. I, I'm sorry again if I mispronounce it. Nice right there by uh, Lewis. A double jab, then a short left hook, or one jab. One. Boom, nice left hook. Something I like doing with the left hand. Oh uh, yeah, there you go. So jab, jab. The jabs don't have to land, like I say. Uh, Lewis is doing a great job of just putting the jab out there. It doesn't have to land. A jab, I said this maybe for the millionth time. A jab is not a punch or at least not a regular punch say with the right hand you want to land it all the time when you throw it the jab you don't want to you don't need to land it every time when you throw it you can just throw in front of the opponent's eyes you could throw it to the side of their head so they slip a certain uh to a certain side it you there's so many ways you could throw a jab and use it even if you don't land it and here he's just getting it active. He's getting that left hand active. Just pop, pop, bang. Check left hook right there. Short left hook, bang. And that's what I like doing with my own left hand when I'm fighting, sparring, etc. Is uh, throwing hooks off the jab, throwing uppercuts off, uh, off the jab. With What that means is you're jabbing and right after you throw a hook. So you're hooking off the jab. Great use for the left hand. The left hand is not only for hooks and jabs alone. You want to put them together and make combinations of them to overwhelm or trick your opponent's defense. But like I said, for the hundredth millionth time, don't always try to land the jab. Because what happens when you're always trying to land the jab, 
is if when you don't land the jab, you get, you get discouraged and then you stop jabbing. Okay. If you have in mind that you don't always want to land the jab, if it lands, it lands. If it doesn't, it doesn't. Then you're never uh, discouraged that you're missing your jab because you're not trying to land it all the time. But if you're always trying to land it like you're throwing a left hook, then you'll get discouraged and you'll stop throwing it and you'll lose uh, a lot of the benefits that the jab the jab has to, uh, has to offer to you. So please, when you jab, try to land it most of the time, but sometimes just pop it out there, keep it, keep your left hand active and it'll benefit you. There, Napolis does that little dip before he get after he gets off the stool. So far, I'm I'm liking what Hedgeman Lewis is doing in this uh, first two rounds. This is the third round. Napolis is doing good work too. Uh, Annapolis looks more focused on the body, trying to slow Hedgeman Lewis down. Uh, Lewis is playing a good game right now with his jab, his feints. There's a certain setup that I'm waiting for to show you guys. I think it's either in this round or a couple rounds later. When I see it, I'll point it out. It's a really good setup by Hedgeman Lewis. Nice body shot by uh, Annapolis right there, right before they clinched. Nice right there. Feint and then jab. Feint, pop. Oh, that wasn't a feint. That was a, he was actually popping the jab right there. Oh yeah, this is the setup actually. Okay, we're gonna rewind this. I'm sorry for rewinding a lot today. So remember how said how I said uh, that Napolis jabs back at after uh, Hedgeman Lewis jabs at him. We'll see what happens here. So jab, and then he gets the jab back. Jab gets the jab back. Bang. Let's see this again. No, he already jabbed before this one. Bang. Okay, let's see. Jab. He gets a jab back. Jab. Gets a jab back. Counters that jab. Okay, that's what I meant by Hedgeman Lewis plays the jabbing game is he'll jab at you, so you jab back at him. And then he counters your counter jab. Now, what does Lewis do after catching uh, Napolis with the right hand? He's going to feint it now because he just hit him with it. And when you hit someone with a shot clean, uh, when you feint it, they're more susceptible to uh, looking at it and paying it more attention because they just got caught with it. So it's fresh in their mind. So now Hedgeman Lewis is feinting with that right hand. Feint. Feint. But what does he do? He feints it, switches over, and comes back with the left hook. That was the setup I was talking about. We're going to re-watch the whole thing again. And then see if you see what I was talking about. Sorry, this is going to take a while to replay this whole thing in slow motion. Okay, you guys ready? Let's watch this. Faint. Switch up. Bang. So quick. So fast. Hedgeman Lewis's. And then now I'm going to watch for a different setup that uh, Naples is going to do that I'll explain. I'll explain that. Nice left hook.
speed wise i'm thinking lewis is the faster of the two power wise i think napolis is the faster of the two Now we saw that uh, that setup I just uh, broke down a little a couple seconds ago. Nice. Uh, I talked about how Hedgeman Lewis uh, slipped to the left, kind of switched his weight to the left before he threw that left hook. So we're going to see if he feints that same thing uh, later in this fight. Lovely small. Okay. You see those little stutter steps? Stutter steps are when you take really short steps with your feet. Nice jab. Usually people stutter step with uh, small jabs before throwing a big jab or a real jab. Like stutter, 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 pop, so the opponent doesn't know when the real jab is coming. You see that right hand across uh, his face, covering the left side, Hedgeman Lewis. Now here we saw that Napolis is uh, getting smarter and knowing that uh, he saw the pattern, what Hedgeman Lewis is trying to do, which is counter his counter jab. So we'll see here what happens. Jab, jab back, jab, jab back, dip down, bang, bang to the body. So he used the same setup, which is he's baiting with the jab. And the round is over. I like how Hedgeman Lewis does a little spin move when he heads before he heads back to the corner. This is a very high IQ fight of a uh, high chess match. I don't like the word IQ actually uh, for boxers. I like saying chess match because I don't know IQ just feels overused. It's like the word Soviet style or other words like that. It's just people, uh, especially on Instagram, they've been used too much. To the, too much I don't I don't like those words but this is a really good chess match between two uh, very two very smart fighters so you see here how his uh, coach Hedgeman Lewis's coach, I think he's going to help him up while uh, Jose Napolis takes a little dip after he gets off the stool. Nice left counter hook. See those small feints that Hedgeman Lewis is doing. And that's the type of fainting you have to do just to land a jab on a great fighter like Jose Napolis. Respecting a feint and, and reacting to it, to it means you respect your opponent. You're not scared of them. Because if you don't respect it, then when they faint you and throw something big off of it, you're not going to be ready to, to defend. So you have to respect your opponent's faint. A low blow by uh, Rosinopolis. I think that was a low blow. Nice body work by Napolis. Uh, this brings me back to something else that I mentioned before in Alexis Arguello's fight studies is I'm not sure who wins this fight because I only got to the sixth round. But uh, I mentioned this with uh, Arguello is in the early, earlier rounds, you won't know th that he's actually that much better than his opponent or that he's the champion. If you don't know who he is and you're just watching a fight, 
he looked sometimes like he was getting uh, hit too much or uh, he was at the same level as of his opponent. But later in the fight, after the 10th round, you really start to see Arguello uh, go into a different gear and really uh, differentiate himself from his opponent in the judges' eyes and the fans. You could really see that he's that much better than his opponent. That might be the case with Jose Napolis. A lot of great fighters, they start off uh, really studying their opponent. And when you're studying, uh, it's hard to beat up your opponent while you're studying them, especially if they're good. But you're studying different moves, their mannerisms and stuff. So you might not be winning all of the rounds. But later in the stretch, especially 15 round fights, uh, when that great fighter has studied his opponent in the early, earlier rounds, he just starts implementing everything that he learned and and noticed and then he just raises uh levels above the opponent so we'll see if that happens here now i mentioned that lewis uh hit uh napolis with that left hook with that setup i talked about and i said will he faint that same left hook and let's see what he does here there's that faint and if you watch my Roberto Duran style, you'll see why, uh, 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 breakdown, you'll see why Lewis drops that right hand when he slips. So there's a feint, there's a feint, and then he comes back with that body shot. So another time to feint a certain move or a punch is after you hit someone with that punch, because then they're looking for it. So if I catch my opponent clean with a left hook, guess what I'm going to feint them with? Not a right hand. I'm going to feint them back with the left hook because they just got caught with it. So it's fresh in their minds and they're looking out for it. And after I, I uh, feint that left hook, then I'll throw a right hand because they're not watching out for the right hand. And then when I catch them with the right hand, I'll feint the right hand, then hit them with the left hook again. And that's how you kind of wrap your opponent in a web. But Jose Annapolis is too smart to be caught in that web. Nice uppercut again from Annapolis. Nice jab. That was beautiful right there. Like I said, Hedgeman Lewis is very quick. I gotta watch more of his fights. Feint, bang, hooking off the feint. So you could hook after you throw a jab or you can feint the jab and go with the hook. There's a billion options to do with the left hand, uh, with the jab, the hook and the uppercut and feint. So many different things you can do with it. Nice right there. You switch over to the side, come back with a left hook from Lewis. That was the end of the fourth round, I believe. Right there, bang. I think this is where the uh, the setup I was talking about that Napolis does. I think he does it in this round or the next round. I'm not sure. See, he does that little dip again before he gets off the stool. After he gets off the stool. Might be just a thing he does. Something that he feels comfortable with. But I haven't seen too many fighters that do that constantly after each round, especially when they're fighting 15 rounds.
Minneapolis just throwing that Canelo uh, right shot to the body where he turned the knuckles down. So Annapolis is doing the same thing that Lewis did, which was switch that weight over to the left. Come back with that left to the body. Beautiful. Like I said in the Duran video, when you see a fighter do this and you wonder why they dropped their hand, it's not a feint. It's to quickly move to the left, which is basically imagine there's a wall and you're pushing against that wall with the right hand to push your body to the left quicker. Or if you're underwater, you push the water this way to move this way. So it's just, just bang, makes you move faster. Bang, and then body shot. And you see how Annapolis keeps dropping that right hook to the body of uh, Lewis when they're in the clinch. Nice body work by Annapolis. I really wish they brought the 15 rounders back. I think 12 rounds aren't good, aren't enough for two great boxers to, to see a boxer actually break down another fighter. That's why I like 15 rounders. You really saw who was the better conditioned, better fighter in 15 rounds rather than 12. 12. You see who has the better game plan, who could resist more of the other fighter. It's uh, I think 15 rounds are a lot better. More of a health risk though, so I think I'll, I don't think they'll ever be back. Nice uppercut. Like I said, Naples with his uppercuts slips that jab. Comes up top with that uppercut. It might have just glanced or it might have caught clean, but I can't tell. Then nice body shot right after. Now, I said Arguello, he does the same thing in the first couple rounds. He kind of seemed uh, not that good, but he really starts to turn on his gears in the fifth to seventh round. And then he pulls it all the way through to the 15th round. And I believe that's what, uh, pa uh, not Panama Lewis, uh, Jose Napolis is doing in this fight. He's starting to really turn up the pace in the fifth round, and we are going into the sixth. The ref doesn't have to doesn't have to do a big job in this fight. Both fighters are fighting pretty clean and uh yeah uh, the best referees are the ones that you don't see in the fight so if you don't see the ref you know that's a good fight because he doesn't have to intervene between the fighters too much unless it's just to break them up See that right hand across the face. And there it is. Let's watch this again. So you remember how uh, Lewis uh, countered uh, Jose Naples with the jab? Well, look what Naples does here. He, he knows that 
uh, Lewis likes to uh, counter his jab, so he does the same thing to him. So he sees the jab come, so pop, leans back out of that one, jabs back right away. Now he knows that a right hand is going to come back, gets out of the way of that one, and then counters the counters, counter with the right uppercut. When I say counters, the counters... counter so Lewis jabs right Naples counts counters with the jab but he knows he's gonna get countered that's the counter from Lewis and then Naples counters the counter from Lewis with the right uppercut and then goes under the left hook and ties him up beautiful sequence uh, this is why I said this is a high level chess game chess match is both fighters are studying each other and picking up on each other's habits and working off of that. So between the fourth one to the uh, first to the fourth round, now fifth or sixth round this is you could see that Naples is picking up a lot more it's like running a marathon some guys might sprint to marathon from the beginning but you know they'll burn out by the end some guys will be behind in the beginning of the marathon and then strategically push their way forward and finish strong and that's what these 15 round fights are it's a marathon uh, you cannot st uh, start super fast. You have to start at a good pace and then carry yourself to the middle of the fight and then close off the fight strong. Unless you're Aaron Pryor. Nice uppercut from Naples on the inside. Nice body work again. That is it. I free. I, I lost count if this is round five or six that just ended. I'm not too sure. There's a nice right uppercut. Nice punches by uh, Annapolis on the inside. Some smelling salts. Nice cardigans that the corner has. See, it does that dip again. Nice job, nice job again.
Nice right hand. Nice job. The last two rounds we really saw uh, Naples pick it up, pick up the pace a little bit, and land more punches. And the more eye catching punches. Nice job. Nice uppercuts. I'm I'm saying Naples was very nice with his uppercuts. Nice double jab from uh, Lewis. It just looks like Naples has the more power of the two when he lands. Uh, the reaction from Lewis is a lot bigger reaction than when Lewis hits. Uh, Annapolis. And that's it for this round, guys. I'll stop it right here. Don't want the video to be too long. I'll try to remember because they don't say what round this is. I think that was the seventh round or the sixth round. Uh, yeah, I want to talk about uh, the jabbing game where, it is, where it's when you're jabbing back and forth to get a jab out of your opponent and counter them. Uh, the feints that Hedgeman Lewis was doing, the uppercuts from uh, Annapolis. Napolis uh, picking up on Lewis's uh, jabbing game and countering the counter. Uh, fainting, respecting the feint and all that stuff. Uh, the marathon, how f uh, uh, long fights you have to pick when you're going to press the pace. You can't press the pace from the first round because then you'll tire out by the end. So that's where experience comes in, where you learn where... Uh, where to kind of stay on a low energy expenditure and then push it through the roof towards the end to close off the show nice uh yeah i'll be back with part two maybe tomorrow or the day after appreciate you guys for watching and i'll see you guys next time bye